Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you to worship this morning. So glad to see all of you as we kind of end our season of Epiphany uh, with our Transfiguration uh, Sunday. And, and then next week, uh, well, actually Wednesday starts the season of Lent with, with Ash Wednesday. Uh, so looking at uh, the Transfiguration uh, text from Matthew's Gospel this morning uh, and where Jesus kind of goes up is, is transformed. Uh, and, and Jesus says, or God says these words of listen to him. Uh, and so as we begin this season of, of Lent, uh, we are reminded of, of who we listen to, what Christ has done for us uh, as he goes to the cross uh, to pay the price for our sins. Uh, and then we rejoice with what Easter Sunday is all about for us as Christians. So we'll look more at uh, this uh, phrase of listen to him uh, this morning. Uh, before we begin, let's begin the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for just this opportunity to come together as your family in your house uh, to be reminded of what your son came to do. As you reminded uh, the disciples that are up on the mountain with Jesus to listen to him, uh, that goes for us too, to, to drown out the, the voices of this world and to tune in to Jesus, to look to him uh, and continue to follow him, uh, pointing people uh, to you and your son. And so just guide us as we worship and praise you this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And I invite you to stand and greet those that are all around you. Welcome all those that are online this morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning. And we say standing for our first hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, all the nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Very often and come into his courts. That we may enter into the holy presence of Christ, let us confess our sins that we may be made righteous, to be made the righteousness of God. We confess to you, Almighty God. sinned against you and our neighbors by our own fault in both our thoughtless actions as well as the good we have failed to do. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, forgive us, renew our hearts, enliven us in spirit, and let us see your glorious mercy. We have something more sure the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, also with you. and let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the brow cloud, you're wonderfully, you wonderfully over foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And so as we continue in our month of February, we are just reminded that we are called to, to follow him, not the, the ways of the world, of our flesh, uh, but to serve others, following his examples, and to do it in love as Christ has loved us. And so let's just uh, say this verse twice this morning. For you were called... One more time. For you are called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Galatians 5.13 Our Old Testament reading for this Transfiguration Sunday comes from the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire, on the top of the mountain, in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. 
and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Peter, the first chapter. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when we, he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice, very voice, born from heaven, and we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing the first of all that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And this is the word of the Lord. At this time, I invite all our preschool through third graders to come up, our Sunday school kids, to come up and lead us in some singing. children's message come and join us my buddy Elias you're gonna come join me boy now I, now I don't know where to sit fantastic job are you gonna shine now <laughs> yeah let, let's shine well good morning let me say that again good morning, good morning. okay we're awake so, um, have, have you ever watched the Olympics? It happens every, like, three, four years. Four, yeah, four years. You, you throw in the Summer Olympics, and you, you get some Olympics a little more often. And, and so I have some pictures here. Um, 
of, of some great Olympic sports here, especially the winter ones, because it is winter, right? I mean, Tuesday kind of exemplified that, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and so here, can you imagine being on a bobsled? Doesn't that look like fun? Or how about ski, skiing here, jumping out of, out of the air? Doesn't that look like an amazing thing? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Curling? I'm going to grow a mustache like this guy. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Tell, tell Carrie that, okay? Be a figure skater? Uh, Wowens? This is what Haley looks like, right? Yeah. Well, Olympics, they, they train a long time, don't they? And, and sometimes they, if they train really hard and they work really hard, sometimes they win a medal, right? And, and what do you do when you win a medal? Do you kind of like, are like, boo? Are you excited? Absolutely. You know, it, like these people here, they, they worked hard as a team and they, they won gold medal and, and they're excited and they're, they're just raring to go. Have you ever had an experience like that where you just didn't want it to end? You, you're just having such a great time. Maybe it was like a birthday party that was just like amazing and, and you didn't want it to end? Absolutely. Just like these Olympic athletes that work so hard, they, they, they do it. That, that was me yesterday. Even though I lost, we lost a basketball game, that was the most fun I have had in a long time. Right, Lena? Yeah. Well, in a little bit, you're going to hear a story. Uh, about, about Jesus going up on a mountaintop with, with three of his disciples. And, and this is an amazing experience. Jesus uh, changes. He is white. He is shining like what you guys were just singing, uh, just bright. And, and the disciples up there are, are so excited, except, especially Peter. And Peter doesn't want this thing to end. He wants people to know what's happening. And, and Jesus kind of says, you know, hold, hold on a sec. There, there's still more to come. And, and so he kind of reminds them that I need to walk to the cross. I need to go to, to, to this cross uh, to die for you guys uh, so that you can all be forgiven. And you really won't understand exactly what is happening until you see me rise again. Because in this experience, God speaks to these disciples and he says, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And so should we always listen to Jesus? Yeah, because does Jesus know what's best for us? Yeah, because he, he speaks the word of God, and, and God certainly knows what's best for us. And so, like every Sunday, is, is a wonderful experience for us to come. Sometimes we don't want it to end because we are in God's house, we are singing his praises, and we, are, we just want to never leave. But kinda, Jesus kind of reminds us, too, that, that there's still work to be done. We still get to go out, and we get to tell people about who? Jesus. About Jesus, Yeah. And, and one day, we are going to be like these Olympic athletes here that, that won gold, the gold medal. They're excited, but most importantly, they don't want this day to end. And, and one day, for us, that day won't ever end. We will be with him forever, and we will be excited, and we will be praising him, and it will be just an amazing thing. But until then, we get to go out, and we get to praise God, and we get to tell people about Jesus and tell people to listen to him. Can we do that? Yes. Can we shine like stars? Yes. Absolutely. Well, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us Jesus, uh, who makes it possible that we can one day be with you and experience what will be like anything that we have ever experienced before. And so let us always keep our eyes on you, listen to you, and tell people about who you are and what you have done for the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up, and thanks for singing for us. And out of respect for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to stand if you are able. And let us say the verse together. Alleluia. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon our lips. Hallelujah. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, 
and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared that to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. We we'll continue with our next hymn, O Word of God Incarnate. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who calls us to listen to him. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. But we hear these words from the gospel reading this morning, the story of the transfiguration of Jesus, and we hear these words that that God says to Peter, James, and John, and, and to us, of this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. We all have those moments where in our conscience we have a choice. We, we listen to maybe the words of, of someone or we listen to the words of ourselves. Well, let me tell you a story about this week. It was Tuesday. Anyone know what happened on Tuesday? Besides Valentine's Day. Yeah, there was a blizzard. Those that have taken driver's training and they tell you, do you drive in a blizzard? Probably not. Do I listen to them? No. You know, I've, okay, I have driven in a blizzard from Moorhead to Sabin on, I'm going to have to say how many times because my wife is here. I've made it from point A to point B, no problem. 
Tuesday, I think this is the same thing. Gary's in front of me. I'll follow him. Gary drives a little faster than I do with my red Ford Focus. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's a wall of whiteness. And, and I'm going to tell you that there was a person as we were coming out of Saban that told us, don't do it. Words not appropriate for church that came out of his mouth as well. <laughs> I heard it. And I said, I'm not going to listen to you. I said, listen to him. Because I got to a point where I couldn't see Gary anymore. I'm not too far from Saban, so I turn around, think I'm on the right side of the road, and then I'm in a ditch. So I call a friend who probably shouldn't be driving out either and comes and rescues me. My wife also said afterwards, you probably shouldn't have done that. I will listen to her. And, and there are, are countless examples. I remember in, in high school thinking, do I go and do the things with my friends that I know I shouldn't be doing? Or do I listen to the good side? Do I listen to the ways of the world, what Hollywood says, how to live my life, how to, how to do things? Or do I follow God's word? And the list goes on and on. Who do you listen to? And God makes it very clear in our text this morning who we listen to. We listen to Jesus. And, and, and this is a really a fascinating story. You know, I, I've preached on it, this is my 10th time now, preaching on the transfiguration of Jesus. And each time, he speaks to me in, in different ways. And, and truly, it's an amazing story. Here, here, Peter, James, and John are called by Jesus to go up on a mountain. And as they get to the top of the mountain, he is transfigured. In, in Greek, it is metamorphs. And we all know what metamorphosis means. It's the caterpillar changing into a butterfly totally changes. Jesus here changes from, from what, he, what I look like to being something completely different. His clothes are as white as can be, and he is shining like the brightest light in the world. And then all of a sudden, Moses and Elijah are there, and they are talking with Jesus, and they're talking with him about what he is about to go and do to walk to Jerusalem, to die on a cross for the world. And yes, Peter sees this. And Peter, being Peter, goes, you know what, Jesus? It's great that we are here with you. Let's celebrate. Let's commemorate this. Let's build a tent for you and for Moses and Elijah. I've read this text many times. And I never noticed that as Peter is still speaking, what happens? But God interrupts him. And says, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. How many times do we think we know what's best? I certainly knew what was best on, Friday, on Tuesday. So did Bob. <laughs> so did a lot of people coming from council. You have elected some great leaders, folks. And praise God that, that we're all safe. Sometimes we get in the way, don't we? Just like Peter is thinking about himself, what we want to do, and maybe that's not the best thing. And that's exactly what God does in our text today. He interrupts Peter, and he points out to him, you know what? Stop. Relax. And listen. Let me put the focus of where it needs to be. Now, a, a seminary prof of mine uh, told a story in class, and, and I remembered it a little bit, but then I was uh, reminded as I was kind of listening to uh, a podcast today that, that he was leading uh, on this text. And a story that he told us 
was about how when he was a pastor, he was in the narthex greeting people like the, we always do after service. And, and this man came up to him and asked him, why doesn't God answer my prayers? And he goes in his mind, well, God does answer prayers. He answered them according to his own time, according to his own will. There you go. Problem solved. I'll give that answer to him. But he says, if I were to do that, if I were to leave that conversation, how it ended there, in the narthex, it wouldn't have helped him. Yes, this is the right answer. God does answer prayers, but he answers them according to his own will, according to his own time. And sometimes saying that doesn't help. Because he said, if I were to answer it that way, I would never have found out that this man's marriage is failing. You see, ever since his kids went off to school and his wife went back to work, their relationship was different. It had changed. He would come home from work and he would make supper and eat by himself because his wife would stay out with her new friends and eat with them. And when she would come home, they would live in separate rooms, sometimes even in separate beds. And he was afraid of the day when they would be living in separate homes. And so in this conversation, he said, this man said, I know about God's will about how God wants it to be a man and a woman forever. I know the power behind God, how he can change people's lives, and I am praying and praying to God that this would happen to me, that things would change, and so why doesn't he answer my prayers? So this pastor, this seminary prof, got to now walk with this person, saying, we will do this together. We will put it in God's hands. And yes, we might not get the answer we want right now, but he hears you. And he invites you to walk with him. Because notice how this text continues. After God speaks to them, the disciples fall on their knees. They are terrified. And Jesus doesn't really say anything at first. But he goes and he touches them. And he says, rise. You have nothing to fear. And they open their eyes. And there is Jesus. We are called to do the exact same thing. We know of people in our lives that are in trouble, suffering, wondering that exact same thing that, that guy had asked that pastor of why doesn't he answer prayers? Why doesn't he listen to me? We get to walk with them, pointing them to Jesus, pointing them to what we are about to embark on, this journey of Lent, where we walk with Jesus to the cross. Because Jesus went to this cross for the world. Jesus lived for you. Jesus died for you. And Jesus rose for you. See, we get to walk that long, difficult road with people. Walking that road to that final alleluia. 
And sometimes that is how our prayers are answered. By seeing him. By putting it in our creator's hands. By being reminded that God sometimes answers our prayers by putting people in our lives to walk this journey together. But also be reminded that we live in a fallen world where there is sin, there's brokenness, and it won't be restored until that day Christ comes back. This week, I, I had to have some, some good conversations with people, and, and our conversations dealt with heaven. It dealt with forgiveness. It dealt with the brokenness of life. And each time in these conversations, I got to use this exact, these exact words of Jesus. I've listened to him. Because in listening to him, we see what Christ has come to do. And it might not be how we would have done things, but we also know that we're not God. We're not in control. I was reminded of that on Tuesday. That as much as I tried, I was not in control of Mother Nature. But I had people to walk with. I got people to celebrate Valentine's Day with that wasn't my wife or my family. But in those times, when you look back, you see how God is in control. How God places people and events in your lives to point you to him. And sometimes you have to open your eyes and see that. Sometimes it takes some things in your lives where your eyes need to be opened up and see him. Wednesday begins Lent. This journey that we take each year with our Savior to the cross. It's a time of remembrance of the brokenness in our lives, in our world. It's a remem remembrance of what Christ did on the cross for us on Good Friday. But it's also remembrance that the story doesn't end with his death. The story ends with an empty tomb and the shouts of Alleluia. And we look forward to that day when that is what comes out of our mouths every single moment. Alleluia. We are in the presence of our Heavenly Father. And so as we journey with him, be reminded of what God has told us about his son. That this is my beloved son, and with him I am well pleased. He has fulfilled all that I have asked. And he's done it for you. And so listen to him. Drown out the other voices of the world, of your head, and listen to your Savior. And be reminded that all he did in this world, he did for you. So that we can be together in paradise. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us stand if you are able. And we confess... I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in the prayers of the church. Almighty and merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for revealing to the world your goodness and mercy in the gift of your beloved Son. Being of one substance with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, he has revealed your glory chiefly in his sacrifice on the cross for the life of the world. Make us certain that because he died and lives again, we and all who trust in him are now given eternal life in the forgiveness of our sin. Lord, in your mercy, by your word and spirit, rule and govern your holy church throughout the world and her pastors and ministers in order that we may be preserved in the true doc, pure doctrine of your saving word and be strengthened in the faith and love. Send forth laborers into your harvest that your kingdom be extended to all nations. Lord, in your mercy, yes. grant your help and protection to all who are in the authority of government. Bless our country, that righteousness and peace abound, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Comfort with your Holy Spirit all who are in trouble, want, sickness, or any adversity, that they may receive healing of body and mind and peace in their souls. Bless all medical pr professionals and emergency workers and all who supply the needy in any way. We especially pray for those in our Trinity family that are listed in our bulletin and those whom we now lift up to you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for all your prophets and apostles who have faithfully delivered your word throughout the ages, and for all your witnesses who have gone before us and are now with you in your divine presence. Keep us in the sure faith and hope of your word that we may one day look upon our Savior face to face in the glory of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially for those who celebrate a birthday this week, for Gladys. Garrett, Julie, Isabel, Ronald, and Sam. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. During this time, we offer up our offerings and tithes. Uh, if you didn't place the offering, uh, your offering when you came in, uh, there'll be an offering plate up here. Uh, and so during this time, I just ask that you reflect on uh, these words of our offering video for today. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all of the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever.
invite you to stand if you are able as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection, and with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. For the forgiveness of all your sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we now join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
receive Christ's true body and blood may strengthen you, and preserve you in your faith until life everlasting. And pardon our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. true body and blood may strengthen you and preserve you in your faith until life everlasting. The pardon our risen Lord's peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. having received Christ's true body and blood, may it strengthen you, preserve you in your faith until life everlasting. Depart in our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Now having received Christ's true body and blood may strengthen you and preserve you in your faith until life everlasting. The pardon our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven.
I invite you to stand if you are able as we join together in prayer. And let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in our sending prayer, knowing that there are many voices out there that are calling people to listen to. But we have the one who has called us to listen to him, who gives us the way to eternal life, the way to forgiveness. And so let us walk with those individuals that are wondering who to listen to and point them to Jesus. So as we pray, pray that God would lead you to someone to point them to him. As we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and win that soul for me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for and now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. On this day, alleluias are sung for the last time in the church until the resurrection of our Lord. Alleluia is not heard during Lent as we turn in penitence to the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ to be renewed in our baptismal faith. Though every Sunday is a little Easter, we restrain our praise until Easter Sunday, when all of Christendom joins in singing alleluias to our King. And so let us now raise our voices in song as we anticipate not only our coming Easter celebration, but that ultimate feast of victory when we shall sing alleluia with saints and angels cherubim and seraphim, Moses and Elijah, apostles, martyrs, prophets, and all the company of heaven before the Lamb on his throne. And so we join together in singing our last hymn, Alleluia, Song of Gladness. Maybe seated for just a couple announcements. Just a reminder, as uh, mentioned, this Wednesday starts uh, the Lenten season, so uh, please join us for Ash Wednesday service. Services will be at 7:15. Uh, we are going uh, start looking at the the series of places of the Passion, so we'll look at uh, different locations throughout kind of Holy Week leading up to the cross, and and how that uh, kind of leads us to what Jesus did for us uh, on the cross and then uh, rejoicing uh, with the Easter tomb, empty tomb uh, on Easter there. Uh, so please come and join us at uh, 715. Uh, come a little earlier at 615 uh, for meal, a meal, and then join us uh, for service afterwards. Uh, starting today uh, through March 5th will be, uh, butter braids will be on sale. Uh, so they are $13 a piece. There's a sign-up sheet there in the narthex. Uh, all proceeds of that will go toward uh, the summer uh, Canada mission trip. Uh, up in Muskrat Dam. Also, uh, the Saving Harvest Days uh, Committee has uh, put together, is it three scholarships? Three $1,000? Well, three $1,000 scholarships uh, for anyone that lives in Saving or kind of the surrounding area uh, and townships. 
Uh, so if you have, have a, a, a child that is in looking for some scholarship, uh, the forms are on the bulletin board uh, in the narthex there. So $1,000 uh, uh, can go a long way. Also, uh, the Moorhead Food Pantry, uh, the school district, is looking for some items. Uh, so there's a list of items uh, in the narthex there of what they're kind of looking for. Uh, so if you are grocery shopping and can pick up a couple of those things and drop them off there, uh, that would be great. Uh, so join us for fellowship. Uh, fellowship today, uh, since we lived in Louisiana, we know how to celebrate uh, Mardi Gras. So there is some king cake in there. If you don't know what a king cake is, go in the fellowship hall and have a wonderful taste of what uh, a little slice of heaven is going to be uh, in a king cake. So a king cake is kind of a Mardi Gras celebration. Uh, there's, there'll be a baby in there. If you get the baby, you host the next party. There's two king cakes in there. There's two babies. I want to be invited to two parties coming up, okay? <laughs> but in, in, when we did it in school, it just meant you brought the next king cake. Um, so you can, you can decide, king cake or a party. Pass prefers a party, okay? <laughs> so uh, have fun with that uh, and, and some other treats uh, there as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lynn and I are always trying to not... not you don't want to outdo me, huh? We're not worried about the king cake okay, situation, but um, we're always in need of making a craft. So we made a craft. We made a picture back there. Proceeds will go to Megan's mission fund. So it's a silent auction, so um, I think Kathy just sold it in a... Uh, I think she said uh, uh, 1.5 million is what she put the bid at. So. <laughs> So Kathy's paying for her own fence wood back. <laughs> Perfect. Very good. Perfect. All right, um, just a reminder that our trivia night is coming up in less than three weeks. We have some great prizes that we will be doing um, for our first, second, and third place teams, and then also um, raffle prizes for that. Um, so join us on Friday, March 10th. Um, if you would like to play but don't have a team of six, you can just email me and we will get you on a team. Our women's Bible study is starting a new study this week at 10 a.m., um, so all women are invited to join us for that. Um, our women's dinner and service project is tomorrow night, so if you'd like to help assemble some meals for the Moorhead School Food Pantry, um, you can join us at 6 p.m. for dinner or 6.30 for the meal prep. Um, and then today is our youth group baking competition, um, so the kids will be baking hopefully delicious cupcakes. Um, so Kurt and Kathy are our judges, so if you don't see them on Wednesday, it didn't go great. I'm hoping for no, no food poisoning. Um, and then also um, next Sunday is our Women and Girls um, Service Project at Hope Blooms. Um, so if you'd like to join us for that, we create um, bouquets. No skill is necessary. They'll kind of um, help you build wonderful bouquets that will be given to nursing homes and hospitals and things like that. So if you'd like to join us for that, um, you can sign up on the bulletin board. Have a wonderful rest of your day, your Transfiguration Sunday, as, as God reminds us who we listen to, and we get to listen to Jesus. And so as we begin this season of Lent, uh, of what Christ has done for us, continue to listen to him. Uh, find time to spend time with him uh, and, and just listen to what he has to say, pointing you to that finally, final Alleluia where we will sing with all those uh, who have gone before us uh, in his presence. And so have a glorious rest of your day and look forward to greeting you in the back. Thank you.